Okay. Hey, good good morning. <clears throat> right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Thank you, Adam. It's great. Uh, I'll just be <clears throat> going straight into demoing um, these three web apps that I've um, created. I'll just do it very briefly. If they look uh, interesting and useful to you, please try them out. Uh, so I'll be looking at three of them. The first one is called Lingo Match Live. So this is basically a smartphone connected version of the taboo game. I don't know if you know that. There are, you basically have a target word that you have to describe to your partner. So um, I'll be looking at that first. Uh, secondly is um, Lingo Bingo. So as the name suggests, it's a bingo game. Um, the way it's different to many uh, online, but when I made it, there were no other versions of bingo where the host could actually see what um, what the um, players had answered. Um, so this, this does that, as well as some other features. Uh, and the third one, Lingo Lab Live, uh, is where the game in which the users compete with each other to create target sentences or words on a given uh, picture or font. Uh, so let's uh, just, all of these three were uh, designed by myself, programmed by Paul Rain, also a lot of design input from Paul as we made them, a very iterative kind of design process. And a uh, big thank you to Hansi Gatwin University where I work. Um, for allowing me to use my research funds in these kinds of fun uh, projects. Uh, so let's have a look at Lingo Match Live. Uh, so in this game, uh, I'll give a little demo, I guess, but on the, on the main um, web page, you can see this basic um, uh, picture showing you basically what happens. So we have um, all players are joined in the classroom and then they're put into pairs. So if you're familiar with Quizlet Live, all the players join and then they're put into groups. Okay, so it's similar to that process. Uh, everyone joins and then they're put into pairs. Once they're in pairs, uh, they'll have the same words on their phones, uh, but without looking at each other's phones and without saying the target word, uh, one player will click a word and then describe it, and then your partner has to click that corresponding word on their own phone once they've understood what it is. Um, there are some different uh, uh, settings and modes that are possible, um, but that's the kind of default way to use it. Um, so if you're setting up a game, if you're the host, you would come here and you have a few options. Uh, by the way, don't don't join this game with a QR code. Uh, this is not real this is best for the classroom as an online demo. I think it would be uh, confusing. We will have some live um, interactive ones in the next two apps we can do that. Um, so first of all, we have selection of item uh, of lists, uh, what kind of list you want to use and items. Uh, we can, by default, there's 12. We can randomize those if we want to, choose new ones. Uh, it's possible to import a custom set. I'll um, maybe talk more about that later. Uh, so once you've chosen your items, we have the options. So you decide who's going to be doing the explaining and who is going to be uh, doing the listening and responding. So that's here with the caller. Uh, terms and definitions, this just means that both players will be seeing the target word. It is possible to have um, one player see different matching information for a, a different kind of game. Uh, if someone makes a mistake, what happens? Well, you can have a time penalty, just time out, just to slow them down so they don't randomly uh, click the buttons and hope to get lucky. Or you can have a more strict one like Quizlet Live in which their points just go back to zero and they have to kind of work their way back up. 
uh, it depends how strict you want to be, it depends how difficult the list is you have in your work with um, There's one last option, which is the hidden letters option. This means on the viewer's um, screen, uh, the words will just show the first and the last letter and one little dot for each missing um, letter. So that means it's not a recognition activity. It's much more, they need a much more productive level of knowledge in order to um, get the answer. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can set one up. So I will join on this one. So uh, let's see. Join on my smartphone. So you will not see this one. And then I'll join on this one so you can see what um, player B is going to be. This is the room number you can see. If you're doing it on computer, you've entered the room number with the smartphone. You just, um, you just Joins automatically with the um, QR code. Okay, so we can see here. <laughs> Adam, I told you not to join. Uh, anyway, we can see the uh, the players list uh, here. So as soon as someone joins, you get to see this list and see who they're matched with, which is quite good. Uh, because that means that um, the uh, uh, the players can kind of the, the students can get themselves organised with a partner as soon as they've joined. Uh, okay, let's try this. <laughs> um, Sorry, <laughs> I'll try. It's okay, Adam. I'll try actually try it with you. Okay, so uh, let's see. I'll be calling and Adam will be responding, and we'll see. We'll just do this for a few um, for a few items. Uh, uh, okay, I think this is mine. Okay, so I'll says tap an item to explain. Uh, let's say, okay, this is something you work at. Uh, hotel. Ah, okay, you can click that if you want. A job. <laughs> yes. Do I do I have to tap it? Yeah, yeah. That's right. In fact, you shouldn't say it because then the students around you would hear. Ah, right, right, right. Tell them. Yeah, just tap it. Don't say it either. I will do. Okay, this is a very popular pet. It's not a dog. Uh, that's it. Okay, so like this, you go through, and you might notice that I actually have more items on my phone than Adam has. There are a few distractors that so it doesn't just become obvious what the last one is. Okay, so I'll um, end that and I'll just, uh, I think we maybe need to move on, but uh, I've found that to be really uh, popular in my classes. I've tried it through developing it over the last semester, we've played it every couple of weeks in class and the students had a really good time. Uh, the connection was reliable, it's been tweaked through the um, process and uh, it's not to say that no one ever drops a connection, but um, the programmer, Paul Rain, has done a really good job on um, doing all that networking to allow them to join, you know, the connected game and then have a, have a partner. Um, if you want to try it out, you can do this thing where you have one sort of dummy browser opened and do the other one on your phone. So I do recommend if you want to try it, to just experiment first. Um, by, uh, Trying out again, but um, let's see. Okay, I think we better move on to the next one, which is uh, Lingo Bingo. So uh, here is a, um, you can see the hosts uh, screen here on the left. So this is what the host would see. And then they have to describe the picture. This is what the players would see. Um, you can have words here, or words on here, or pictures. Uh, again, you can use the hidden letters mode if you want to make it more challenging. Um, 
And the difference between this and Lingo Match is that in Lingo Match, they're all paired up. Um, the students are all paired up, whereas this is more designed for having a teacher usually lead it and having you know as many players as you like um, uh, answering the questions. Um, so that's basically Lingo Bingo. Let me see if I can set up a game really quickly and we might have people just join. So we can see here lists, words, images, custom. Let's go for one of these uh, blocks. Uh, here is the QR code. Does anyone want to join that game? We won't do a full one. We'll just do it like a few few items and finish it just so you can see what it uh, looks like. Anyone game with their, okay, good. We've got someone there, we've got a couple, okay. Anyone else joining? I might just join, just. Okay, cool, great. You can change your name or you can keep it just generic like that. Okay, thanks those people. <clears throat> So uh, first of all, I would have it. So when you're setting up the game, showing the QR code, you would display the QR code, obviously, but then you stop the sharing and this is when just the host, just the teacher will be seeing it and explaining it. Okay, so uh, 10 part of the time is 10 past 10. Then you want to just click the answer there. 10 past 10. There's a lot of clocks there. Uh, we should be able to see when people have answered, other people answering. Yep, that's right. Okay. And when everyone's, someone got wrong here, yeah? um, when everyone's answered, we can see the, the queue to move on to the next question. You can move on. Okay, so it's just giving you a countdown warning to the next question, and then that'll pop up and so on. Um, when people get bingo, it, it lets the host know, but it doesn't end the game automatically because the teacher might have different rules they want to play. You might want to wait until everyone's got bingo or three people have got bingo or whatever. Um, unlike normal bingo, quite often does take people longer to, um, <laughs> to get bingo because if they make a mistake, that basically means that they cannot uh, complete that line. Uh, okay, that is basically Lingo. bingo. Um, let's see, are there any questions about Lingo bingo? Game. Okay, let's move on to the Lingo Lab one. Uh, so in Lingo Lab, this is actually an activity that has a bunch of different formats, not just the Lingo Lab Live one. <coughs> so in the Lingo Lab Live uh, version of it, it looks basically like this. So like the other ones, you have a, a leaderboard showing people's progression through the questions. Um, but the question and answer format is like this. So we have some kind of prompt and then the person answering can respond with, can be either a um, sentence or a word. Uh, so yeah, so the unique thing about this one is that, yeah, it allows that sentence level or phrase level kind of practice. Um, I'll just give a look. A little more information about the different kinds of modes you can use in the Lingo Lab activity. So, as I said, the target answer can be a word, phrase, or sentence. Um, the cue can be text, whether it's Japanese or English, can be audio based on text, so text to speech audio, <coughs> or it can be a picture, or it can be a combination of those things. Um, the target words um, are on the tiles either like this, 
to own them completely or the hidden letters mode thing. So I do like this. I haven't seen it in many other apps, but I think um, many other apps do. But um, it does make it much more challenging and allows for a kind of uh, productive level knowledge kind of practice without them having to um, input by typing, which has all sorts of issues. Uh, one further mode that I added uh, this uh, last year was uh, this one, the Stella mode. This is good for sentences or words. In the case of using sentences, it breaks the sentence up into a chunk of five bits. So this is probably the easiest mode to use for sentences. It's good if um, you're using the unfamiliar sentences for the first time with the users. Uh, if you uh, are using words in it, it'll break the word up into chunks. There are some pretty nice word games that use this kind of format. I think it's uh, very cool. Uh, so in the Lingo Lab Live game, you can choose any of these parameters with the, um, you know, the Q and the, uh, the Q types and the answering types. Uh, can do something like this even where you have a picture, sort of an info gap style uh, thing where they're given information and have to answer a question. You, know, you could have this question as an audio question. So they're listening, reading, responding without hidden letters here. So yeah, with those different variables, you have a whole bunch of different types of tasks you can do. Um, so yeah, that does exist on actually three different sites. Linga Lab CO, which is for self-study, uh, Linga Lab Online, in which you can set those kinds of um, activities as one of quizzes, make custom sets and monitor progress. And then the other version is this live version, uh, which we might just set up a very quick game of now. Let's try one with some English questions and a single word to respond. Okay, so I'm gonna get into my custom set import. Go there. So I've got 10 words there. Uh, let's make it this word stellar stellar mode. Let's try that. Um, and this is similar to the other one. Show a QR code. We have some volunteers. You don't have to put in your name. You can be anonymous. We'll just do a few to um, demonstrate. Great. Thank you, somebody. As well. Okay, excellent. Okay, let's start the game. Okay, good luck. If you uh, don't know the answer, just have a guess because you will get a. Um, you won't be penalized if it's. Uh, it's quite hard, actually. <laughs> a little bit of trouble answering the first, first question. Uh, so we can see, okay, all this got one there. I've got one. Just get this one. Um, okay, good. Yes. Good people answering there. Um, okay, I'm going to end it there. I think we've got the idea. With these games, um, in fact, with, uh, with this one and Nico Match, let's three, uh, three people win. Yeah. So when three people win, that's what <coughs> that's what tends to I think it's better than just allowing the first person to win. Um, uh, you just have more people able to do the task for a longer time. Okay, let's finish that there.
And uh, you saw that I put in a little code to choose this um, custom set. Um, those sets can be made on Lingo Lab Online. Um, you create them there, um, get a little code, and with this code, you can import them into the Lingo Match game, Lingo Bingo, or Lingo Lab Live. Okay, I think I might uh, finish up there to see what questions people have. Do we have any questions? If there are no questions for me, feel free to ask uh, questions for Adam. I had a question for you there, Oliver. Oh, wait, somebody else has got one. The question about the matching game. Uh, yeah, if you have an odd number of students, there's the, the odd number one is just instructed to help help another pair. It really can't be, can't be helped. Um, but that's fine. You know, they'll just be looking over the shoulder of another player and, and helping one of them. That was uh, Jackie Hawkins' question. Go ahead, Adam, if you have. Ah, oh, here we yeah. go. Uh, what's the best age of the learners to recommend Lingo Live? Yeah, I think it really depends what um, what kind of word set you use in it. So you can make the Lingo set, uh, make it, if you're making your own custom sets, you can make them as easy as you want. Um, it's pretty easy to use. Um, I've used it, I mean, I teach at uni, so I usually use it with uni students, but um, I'm sure even the uh, young men could, could do it. Um, yeah, with, by the way, with these ones, I have used, yeah, Lingo Bingo and Lingo Lab Live in my like Zoom classes, and they work well. The Lingo Match one, that one, you really need to be in a classroom together because you have all the pairs. I think it would be really hard to do that. On a, in a Zoom class, I think. Yeah, yeah. Paul said Peach can join the makeup. Okay, Adam, did you have a question? Yep. So are, are these all uh, their web apps, and I can just access them with the the URLs that are there? Yeah. That, yep. That's right. Um, I'll put a uh, a link for the. Um, the help site's in here. And so the help site has a lot of the info and more um, that I presented today. It should help you get started. There's links to all of the different apps on there. I do need to put a bit more info for Linda Match, but uh, I'll get that up fairly shortly. Yeah, so this site here has all the Lingo Lab stuff, Lingo Bingo, uh, Lingo Match. And uh, yeah, these are all uh, these are all free. Feel free. Some of them uh, do not. Lingo Bingo and uh, Lingo Lab Live don't require any login from teachers or students. Um, uh, Lingo uh, and Lingo Match too. Yeah. Um, the only one requiring login is the Lingo Lab sites where you're monitoring student progress, or um, so you can see you can like assign a set and see what students have um, check the students have done it and how easily they do it etc that's quite similar to the task in duolingo but um with um this the benefit of this is that you can choose um the actual items that you want students to do whereas in duolingo it's kind of a phone path that you have to follow okay thanks adam uh if there are no other questions for me. Go ahead, ask Adam. Yeah, any any questions for me? I'm happy to answer now as well. I also wanted to say that if if anyone wants to download the app or wants to have a free trial, if you could uh, go over to the Gamerize Dictionary Facebook page or um, possibly just send me a direct message on Facebook 
if if you're on there, um, I'd be happy to to help with that as well. But yeah, go ahead if there are any questions. Maybe you mentioned it, but I was wondering about yeah the the, the teachers monitoring of it. They they have like a dashboard, do they? And they see the yeah, the dashboard's quite simple, but uh, on the dashboard you can create um, custom sets. You can make classes. You can assign uh, specifically to certain classes or individual users. You can check analytics and all that. It's a little bit similar to some uh, to a flashcard app, but all of the content is there. So there's it doesn't take an hour to. It takes literally a minute just to make a, a set and assign it. Mm. Um, There's a question there for you, Adam. Um, how much time does it usually take to monitor and set up? Oh, I lost it. Uh, hold on, let me click on that. Uh, how much time does it take to set up and monitor um, Minecraft? You seem so old, then. <laughs> yeah, a lot, it can be quite a long time. I'm actually not an expert at all. I'm kind of just getting started with Minecraft. Um, but there is there's definitely a technical hurdle to get over um, for yourself as a teacher and very much the students as well. Um, I would suspect that the first time you get the students into Minecraft for a class, expect them just to mess around a lot. Um, and that's kind of part of the learning as well. So, um, yeah, I would I would definitely keep your mind open for that. And if you there, explore the, the pre-made content packs on um, Minecraft education first, um, a lot of them are not graded for uh language learners so if you've got kids that are you know at a you know pre a1 or a1 level a lot of it's going to be kind of out of their uh range but yeah uh creating your own stuff is probably the best way to do it but that of course does i mean prep time can be quite significant there you don't need an ms account to use minecraft yet Uh, and somebody asked for a link. I have a link to the Gamerize app. Yes, I will do that now. I had a QR code slide, which I was trying to find, but I didn't have it there. Uh, it is available, by the way, for uh, Android or iOS. There's no web-based version. The teacher dashboard is web-based. Uh, let's see. Okay. Instead of the um, link to the App Store, I'm going to put the link to our website. That way, you'll find the links to uh, Android or iOS. There is no auto. Uh, so Jackie mentioned uh, everything is in English, right? No auto translation. I I don't think there are I think there might be fully Japanese versions of it as well you can choose the language not necessarily a translation but you can play it in any language uh we're talking about Minecraft I think right um uh, but uh there is one really nice feature for language learners which is if there is text you can actually have it read the text to you um and it will highlight the words so uh, if your learners are not super strong at, at uh reading but are better at listening um, that's one way that you can kind of scaffold it for them. Okay, it looks like we're just about at, out of time and at the end of everything there. Is that right? Sarah? Yep. All right. So thank you, everyone, for coming to the event. Uh, the videos will be available on YouTube later. Right. And uh, please fill out the survey that was put in the chat if you can. Right. Thank you okay. for coming. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.